Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Steph, and today we're going to be setting up the April 2022 pages in my sister's bullet journal. Uh, this journal, again, was purchased at Michael's, and it is, I guess, slightly wider than an A5. The entire theme for April is designed around the Archer and Olive subscription box that came out when I was setting this up, which was probably September of 2021. So I was setting all these pages up. Then this subscription box came and I thought what a perfect theme for my sister for April of this year uh, because we used to travel quite a lot with our grandparents um, as kids and so we spent quite a few nights out in the deserts of Arizona and looking at the uh, the Segura Cactus Park, like you can go out and walk out, Painted Desert, uh, Petrified Forest, all of that stuff we've been to with our grandparents. So here you can see uh, I am ripping some of the navy blue dot grid paper from the uh, paper pack, paper book that came with that box. Um, and setting it up so that it's going to take the place of the night sky just to save me having to color all of that in. Now because I knew I was going with a theme surrounded or using all the elements of the box, I didn't sketch anything in in advance so you're gonna see a lot more of me kind of just like thinking about what I'm doing and deciding in the moment how I want things to go so sort of like a freestyle uh, setup here which is very much against my nature I like to sketch things out and plan them and make sure that everything looks balanced and correct but in the end she did say that this was her favorite setup of all of the pages for her first six months of journal. Um, I'm gonna skip quite a bit of this because it was a long time filling in the entire page with a 0.7 millimeter uh, acrylograph, but yeah, so here I'm making a cactus with the teal blue-green color that came with it. And then I'm layering in kind of like these desert mountain hills uh, in the pink, red, and purple. see there that it takes quite a long time to, to color those things in. So we're going to skip a little bit of the pink and then the red here so we can get to the end. Um, as it is, just the setup of this page is still half of this video. So yeah, it would have been just a lot of these tiny brush strokes if, if I didn't do these time skips uh, to get to the end of it. I will say that this was my first time using acrylographs. These are the first ones that I got, and so I wasn't yet familiar with how to kind of really use them. So you have a lot of scratchiness and a lot of texture going onto the page here. Um, I will also point out that any paper that's not the Archer and Olive 160 GSM. Uh, does not stand up well to acrylographs in terms of the wetness of the paint. There's a lot of warping that happens in this setup and since then, um, recently I've, I've been setting up other pages for her for the rest of the year and used them in her September setup and there's a bit of, of warping where the pens were used as well. Here you can see I'm starting to realize if you hold them straight up you get less of the scratching. And moving on to the red. I really like how this turned out. She said she liked it 
of all of the setups because the whole page was covered in color. Um, not usually my aesthetic. I think it's it's a very bold choice and it can look great uh, here and there, but not something I would do in like every page just because of the amount of time that it takes. So they did have this like really pretty creamy like lemon yellow white acrylograph in the set and so I obviously use that for the moon and the stars uh, as well as a saccharo white gel pen for the quote and for the headers because I wanted that to be in like a true white color. I was actually really pleased with myself for the random placement of the stars. Typically I'm so uh, detail oriented and patterned in nature that I find it impossible to get like a truly random looking smattering of stars or dots or what have you. They always end up being in a straight line or clustered together or in like a perfect 2-1-2 kind of grid. So I was, again, just not, not something I'm I would consider in my wheelhouse in terms of that pattern. Since it's April and that is the springtime and the desert does have a spring, I went ahead and added a little cactus flower onto our cactus here and then in true Archer and Olive uh, fashion added these white lines uh, which match pretty well with the enamel pin that they sent out with that box uh, which my daughter has on her backpack for school. Um, I just didn't have a use for it personally, so I gave it to her. And it still felt a little blank, so I decided to add a couple little white kind of uh, sprigs of grass and or wheat, whatever you want to think that that looks like just to add a little bit more visual interest to the page and not make it just these big washes of color. Again because I didn't plan it out I wasn't even sure where I was going to put April at this point. I wanted it to stand out uh, but I didn't want it to be like the main focus of the page. So it's there, but it's not the first thing that your eye is drawn to, obviously. And then for the quote, I wish I could remember because I set this up six months ago, but I'm pretty sure what that says, if I can read my handwriting, is if a flower can flourish in the desert, you can flourish, I guess. So there you can see the warping of coloring in the pages and what it did to the paper behind it. And you'll see me referencing back to the future log for what, because again, I was doing this so far in advance for where I needed to put these lines. And because I didn't sketch it in ahead of time, I'm doing a lot of counting and double counting and triple counting to make sure that it's gonna be correct since I'm not going in with pencil first. I don't recommend this uh, process, I was just, kind of at a loss and stuck in terms of what I was going to do um, and it was getting down to the wire I needed to get this month done. I think I did May for her before I did April even uh, because I just didn't know how I was going to set it up and so it got down to the wire and I was like okay we have to get this done and I just sat down to do it and I don't recommend that method. Um, generally speaking, I guess it worked out well because she really loves this theme, but it was a headache for me just because I wasn't going into it with a clear plan. As usual, the calendar spreads that I do are always six boxes tall by five boxes wide. Uh, since this book is slightly wider, I think it's like two boxes wider than um, like an A5 from Archer and Olive, uh, you're going to have slightly more room for decoration around the outsides uh, compared to an Archer and Olive A5 with those 
measurements. I use an Archer Olive A5 for myself. Uh, my setup for my April theme will be up probably in a few days. Um, I have to still edit that. I filmed it a couple of days ago and just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, but I did share those photos on Facebook. Um, and I should probably post them on Instagram. I'm just terrible at using Instagram. I just don't even think about it. Um, here you can see just a couple of cactus. One of the cool things about the Segura cactuses is that they can, what is the term, propagate? grow off of itself in these random offshoot ways um, so they can get really interesting looking in general and then I took the colors of the acrylographs and did kind of like a rainbow motif with the pens that were given um, trying not to have like the pinks next to the orange or the green next to the blue things like that I apologize again for being off the camera. Uh, this was six months ago, so forgive my inexperience at the time for where to place the book. I say that like I don't still sometimes struggle with that, but I have gotten better about checking the frame as I'm doing things. If I move the book around a couple of times, just checking the frame to make sure it's still in it. Um, it would be great if I had the kind of setup where I could film and see the viewfinder at the same time to make sure that I was in frame all the time uh, rather than having to like stand up and check the camera but yeah so some of this is set up uh, it's really just washi tape so I don't feel like you're missing too much I'm just placing washi tape at the bottom that's what you're gonna miss here in a couple of seconds Moving on to the Habit Tracker, I really like the balance of these pages. Uh, the Habit Tracker and Mood Tracker I think turned out really cute. Um, I just put more of that dark blue paper and this was my favorite washi tape that came in the collection in the set uh, was this navy blue dragonfly gold foil washi tape uh, and then I just wrote Habit Tracker in the white gel pen and gave her six boxes for habits to track and then balance the page out by making the same uh, border at the bottom. And then if you didn't notice, the other washi tape, the one that I put at the bottom of the calendar page, has a very, um, it's what inspired the cover page with the different wavy layers of color from the theme. So that's how I came up with uh, the cover page idea of just a scene of night sky. I was originally going to do it in like a small framed in box to make it easy because again, 
I was making this journal to see how quickly and how efficiently I could create journal spreads for the purpose of like creating custom journals uh, and then just completely went in the opposite direction and found that because I was making it for someone else there was more pressure for it to be amazing and because it was my sister I knew she would give me feedback on that um, so I ended up going like overboard just about every month um, with the exception of February was quite simple because it was just hearts and March was uh, the olive leaves, January was the snowman, and everything was just more than just the cute simple doodles I was originally thinking I would do. For the habit tracker here, I just created a couple of those uh, propagated, I don't even know if that's the right word. I feel like it's the right word, but I'm not certain. These cactuses with the offshoots that grow up randomly, uh, and then section them off to have enough for the month. And then that was it. I gave her space to make her key and that is the habit and mood tracker. And that leads us to the final standard page that I put in every monthly spread, and that is her brain dump and monthly highlights page. And I don't like leaving just blank pages, so I always add some kind of a border. One thing that is kind of cool about creating these bullet journal spreads and then watching them six months later is just noticing the difference in styles and the difference in what I was doing then versus what I would do with it now. So that's kind of really interesting. I probably would have went with a different font than that basic cursive if I was doing the theme today. But we are nearing the end. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the final flip through. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Please let me know in the comments which of these spreads was your favorite or which elements you enjoyed. Um, I particularly love that blue paper. I just think it's super pretty. Uh, go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Just like it if you didn't. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content. I release about two videos a month currently. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a good one.